and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenlies. Jesus gave us a mandate, in fact, two mandates. The first mandate is in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, where he says, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature because you can't have disciples if you don't preach the gospel go into the world and preach the gospel to all creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not is condemned already and then this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues Shall raise the dead. They will handle snakes. Then the second mandate is in Mark 2, chapter 28, verse 19. He's not contradicting himself. He's saying the same thing. Because evangelism is the beginning of discipling. Evangelism is what? The beginning of what? You cannot disciple somebody who has not been evangelized. The problem we're having is we're trying to disciple people who are not saved. When, you, when someone gets saved, saved the, the foundation has been laid in, in him. The, the life of God is in him. He can listen. He can obey. He just needs to be shown the right way. So we have to evangelize first before we talk about discipling. Before you even go into discipling, make sure the person has had an encounter with God and has gotten saved we can't do discipling without evangelism very crucial we can't do discipling without evangelism we cannot do what discipling without first evangelism all of you are disciples today because somebody preached the gospel to you so the foundation is evangelism where we have problem in discipling usually comes from the foundation of, of evangelism maybe the person didn't hear the gospel Many people are in church who didn't necessarily get saved. They didn't encounter God. They're just coming to church. So, we have a work to do. Can we say evangelism? Many of our churches need new, fresh evangelism. All this is what we're talking about. This is coming to the altar. That's evangelism. So we can get, renew our commitment to God and then the foundation and the, um, the structure of, of discipleship can be laid. Right. So, let's look at the subject of discipleship. You cannot disciple an unbeliever. What are the marks of a disciple? What are the marks of a disciple? How do we know somebody is a disciple? How do we know somebody has... How do we know disciples? What are the things that identify them? What do we use to know this is a disciple? I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes and then we'll not talk about the codes. But let's talk about the marks of disciple. Number one. Disciples put the kingdom first. You're a disciple when you come to the place where you put the kingdom first. Where the kingdom is number one to you. A disciple keep, puts the kingdom first. A disciple will not put anything before the kingdom. He will not put anything before church program. He will not put anything before what the pastor has told him to do. He will do that one first. Jesus says, Jesus, Jesus didn't say, seek ye the kingdom of God, so it shall be well with you. No, he says, seek ye what? First, not just seeking, but put it what? First. The, the disciple does it first. Seek it first, the kingdom. Amen. Everybody, go and join the other class. Go and fill up the. 
disciple puts the kingdom first. One man came to Jesus and said, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 19, and it's a charge we are going to carry from here. And that is the last order. We are told in the army to obey the last order. And what did he say? Go and make what? Disciples of all nations. Disciples of all nations. It's very clear we still need to get this job, understand this job, from the last experiment we had in this country. So we need to intensify it. Go and make disciples of all nations. And to make disciples, there are things every disciple must know. We're not into preaching different messages to entertain people. We look for what is the problem, and we look for the solution, and we stay on it until we get the answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the first code is service. Every disciple must know something. There are things you must know. You must know how to behave yourself in the house of God. First Timothy chapter one verse three, verse, uh, chapter three verse fifteen. It says, "But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth." There is how to behave in the house of God. There are things we must follow. There are things we must know. If you're a disciple of Christ, you must know those things. Number one is service. You must know service. You must understand service. You know, there's a difference between knowing something and knowing it by revelation. You must have a revelation of service. If you serve God based on somebody told you to serve God, it's going to come from the flesh. But if you serve God because you have a revelation that you shall serve the Lord God and he shall bless your bread and your water and he will take sickness out of the midst of thee. That revelation is enough to motivate you all your days. You will never need encouragement one day to serve God again because you have a revelation of it. Praise the Lord in the house. I said praise the Lord. I said Lord reveal service to me. He said to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh let my people go that they may do what? So why did he set you free? Why are you not in the hospital? Why are you not dead? Why are you not going to hell? The purpose for which you are here is service. He's not looking for who to save. There are many people in hell now. He's not running out of um, uh, uh, space. In hell. Hell keeps increasing as people keep coming. just expands as people come in. So it's not the issue. The issue is he's saving you because there is something which he wants from you. Because he sees a purpose in you. Because he has put something in you. You have something to offer. You're not an empty Christian. There is no empty scent. For the Holy Ghost has, been, has poured out his gift severally unto all men. So every person who is born again has something to give. Tell your neighbor you have something to give. I can't hear you. Tell that person you have something to give. There is no empty Christian. There is no, I don't have anything to offer Christian. That's not true. If you can say that, then you're not saved. If you have the Holy Ghost in you, you have a gift in you. He said, for the gift of God is what? Salvation. And that place he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So if you have the Spirit of God in you, you're already gifted. So you're a gift to your generation. Come on, say, I have something. I can't hear you. Say, I have something. One more time. I have something. Go and tell him, let these people go. Why? That they may serve me. And more and more, we need to intensify the message of service. As we see the end approaching. You need to get yourself secured. If you're not serving God, you're not safe. If you're not serving, you're not safe. The covenant covers servants. All the covenants in the scriptures, all the promises are for servants. 
It says, no one formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you, judgment thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of God, not the confessors of scriptures. The servants of God. There is a guarantee over your life that no weapon can touch you in all your days of service. Come on, praise the Lord in the house. Come on, say, I'm here to serve God. I'm not here to be served. I'm here to do something for God. So I'm here to do something for God. Praise the Lord in the house. I said, praise the Lord in the house. So how do we serve God? How do we serve God? Where can I start serving God? If you're like me, when I got born again, I started in the prayer department. I wanted to start with evangelism, but the Holy Ghost said to me, go and join prayer first. And I joined the prayer department. I said, but I want to, be, I want to preach like a daosa. I want to preach like Abraham Bonke. He said, if you want to preach like a daosa, you have to pray first. So I now joined the prayer department, and I was there. We were praying and praying, and I learned how to pray. And then from there, other things began to, because there's a place to start. You have to start somewhere. Praise the Lord in the house. Praise the Lord in the house. So how do we serve God? Where do we start? Where do we start? You start by finding yourself in a department in the church. Find something you can do. Don't be idle. Every idle part of the body is cancerous. Cancer is that part of the body that develops for no reason. It's not doing nothing, but it's collecting everything. And the only answer to cancer is what? Cut it off in time. He won't cut it off in Jesus' name. There is no useless part of your body, so you cannot be useless in the church. Even your hair has a purpose. Everything in your body is working for your body. So if you're in the body of Christ, you must be working for the body. You can't be idle. Amen? I said amen. So you need to have the attitude. Not what can God do for me, but what can I do for you, Lord? That was the first question Paul asked God. That's why he became the greatest apostle. He wasn't asking God, where are my blessings? Where is my blessing? Where is my breakthrough? Where is my... He said, what can I do for you, Lord? What shall I do for you, Lord? That was the first question. The Lord said, it's too early for me to be telling you things directly. Go to the church and they will tell you. So don't sit in your house and say you're talking to God. Come to the church and we'll tell you what to do. Come on, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. After opening that blind man's, after putting clean the blind man's eye, he said, go to the river, the pool. The pool is called scent. That means even though he has touched you, you need the scent ones to open your eyes. That's why you're in church. To know where you belong. Come on, tell somebody you belong somewhere. You have to be more active. Say you belong somewhere. So where, how do we start serving God? Number one, by preaching the gospel. That's where we all start. And I've said somewhere, you don't need special training to preach the gospel. You don't need a level of sanctification to preach the gospel. From that day, she got up and the whole city came to Jesus. So the basic is evangelism. You don't need this. You don't even need to know scriptures. That blind man said, I don't know any other thing. All I know is that I was what? Start with your testimony. I was blind. You said the man is a crazy man. You said the man is fake. I don't know about that. All I know is that I was blind. But now I see. Has Jesus changed your life? I don't know who I'm talking to. Have you encountered Jesus? Because if you haven't, don't worry. Have you met Jesus? Has he done anything in your life? That's your message. Preach it. That, that man who was delivered from demonic bondage, who was possessed, he wanted to follow Jesus. Christ said, no. Go and tell them what God has done. So from your day one of salvation, you can start preaching. In fact, I found that the fastest way to grow as a Christian is through evangelism. There are scriptures you are hearing that mean nothing to you until you start preaching. There are things you will never experience. He said, these signs shall follow them. You don't follow what is static. You follow what is moving. Praise the Lord. I can't hear you. I say, praise the Lord. Tell somebody you have no excuse. Preach the gospel. Come on, tell the person, preach the gospel. One more time, preach the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus. For it is, not it has, it is. The power of God unto salvation. So a gospel encounter is a power encounter. The gospel carrier is a power carrier. You can begin serving God as a preacher. 
Go to your friends. Go to your neighbors. Tell them what Jesus has done. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord in the house. Who is telling me I will preach the gospel from today? Raise your hand up. I will not let one day pass anymore. I must say, Lord, I receive a fresh mandate to be a witness. One more time. Lord, I receive a fresh mandate to be a witness. He said that you're a witness or you're a weakness. Receive fresh fire in this conference and let the world around you be affected. The purpose of light is to give others light. You don't light a candle and hide it. We are being lighted here so you can light your world. Change has come. I say change has come. Can we say preaching the gospel is serving God? One more time. One more time. Louder, come on. That's where you start. Romans chapter 1 verse 9. Amen. Amen. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of Jesus. So when you're preaching, you're serving. You don't anybody to tell you you're serving God. Gospel preachers are servants of God. These people have divine immunity on them. It says, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of enemy. And nothing shall by enemies. So they will try many means. But, they shall, but nothing shall by what? Enemies. Hurt you. We heard the, the testimony of pastor. How that man put time on him. Because he's a gospeler, you can't touch gospel carriers. You can't even see when they arrive. Talk less of knowing when they leave. Amen. I said amen. amen. Number two, through acts of righteousness. You're living a holy life. is a service unto God. The Bible calls it your reasonable service. Your what? Your what? Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you what? Present your bodies a living what? A living sacrifice, holy and what? Unto God, which is what? So everything you're doing without holiness is unreasonable. And God doesn't see reason in what you're doing if you're not holy. So your second place of service is through what? Living a holy life. Amen. I said amen. amen. Come on now, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. When you serve righteousness, you're serving who? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Whatever pleases God is righteous. Number three, by acts of love. When you show love to people, you are serving God. By acts of love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. Amen. I said amen. amen. By prayer. Join the prayer team. Form a prayer ring. Pray. Pray. Nigeria needs prayer more than ever now. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know the Bible says fear not. I thought it said fear not. Until I now saw what happened. And I understood what fear not means. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to pray. We need to do what? When you pray, you ask. Don't, I don't mean praying for your breakthrough. Praying for the church. Praying for the pastor. Praying for the work of God. Praying for new converts. Change these selfish prayers we have been praying. Let's start praying for others. That's what God uses. So when we pray, we serve God. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. Prayer is a service unto God. I don't have time. Number 5. True fasting and praying. Fasting is a form of service too. Luke chapter 2 verse 37. The other two men served God with prayer and fasting. So when you are fasting for the church, fasting for the man of God, fasting for the move of God, you are serving God. Amen. I said amen. amen. By serving your generation, whatever you do to affect lives is a form of service to God. Number eight, the, uh, by serving a man of God, servants of God, the servants of God, those who walk around them are also serving God. Um, and then with your substance, that's the last one. With your, you also serve God with your money. He said, let my people go. He said, okay, let them go, but let them leave their money here. He said, no, we will go with what? We'll go with our substance. Because we'll we cannot appear before our God empty. So we, when you give to the work of God, you're also serving God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What did it cost God to secure our service? What did God, what price did God pay for us to serve him? What price did he pay to guarantee our service? Number one, he saved you. 
So when he was saving you, he was making an investment in you that you will bless him back. God is a business God. He's a God that teaches us to profit. He never does anything without profit in mind. God never does anything without profit in mind. Whatever God does, there's something he's expecting from it. So anything he does in your life is for something. That's how God is. Lord, bless me. Why will I bless you? Lord, lift me. For what? I've lifted many. Lord, open doors for me so that you can do what? You can run away. No, that door will remain closed so you can stay here. Praise the Lord in the house. Lord, I want to marry a, a rich man so I can so he can be out of reach. No, stay here. Anything that you're asking God that does not benefit him, he's not interested. So why is he saving us? Because it is to his benefit. The Bible talks about how God has been enriched by us. Not just us being enriched by God. God, is, God has an inheritance in you. Hallelujah. So he saved you. Can we say I was saved? For this purpose. Number two, deliverance from every work of the enemy. Luke chapter 1 verse 74. He has guaranteed that for every work of the enemy against you, you will be, you will be rescued from it. Luke chapter 1 verse 74. He said to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might what? Serve God. Without what? Without what? So you are delivered to do what? To serve. Your, so deliverance is for those who serve God, not for people that run around. Amen. I said amen. I said amen. amen. Number C, angelic assistance. Psalm 91 verse 11. He gives his angels what? So he gives angels to those who serve him. He gives angels to everybody who won't have angels. But there are levels of angels. You should know that. Just there are levels of police and levels of army. The angels that are around you are a function of your level with God. When you go further in commitment, they also add it to you. Psalm 91 verse 11. He gives his angels what? Charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In Amplified Version, it says in all your days of service. You don't give police protection to a non-entity. Police is given to important people, VIPs. When you become VIP in the kingdom, God assigns special angels, VIP angels around you to make sure no nonsense comes near you. Say, I have angels. We have been told this morning about the angelic ministry. Say, I have angels. Say, I have angels. Say, I have angels. Number, number four, purging of the blood. Purging of the blood. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. The blood is there to keep you clean in your days of service. You don't wash a cup you will not use. You don't wash a cloth you are not planning to use. You don't take a cloth to a dry cleaner just to wash it. You are washing it to do what? So God is washing you that he may do what? He's washing that he may use you. He's washing you for his purpose. Praise the Lord. Number eight, uh, five, grace. Can we say grace? Can we say grace? Can we say grace? Yeah. There's so much talk about grace in our generation. So people have turned grace to disgrace. Grace is not an excuse to be lousy. Any message you are hearing that is killing your zeal from God, I don't care who is preaching it, it's from the devil. Any teaching you are hearing that makes you relax, ah, I don't have to do anything. Jesus has done everything. He didn't do everything. He did the ones you can't do. Any message you're hearing that does not put fire in your heart, he said, did not our hearts burn when he spoke unto us? It's not my word like fire. Any word you're hearing that does not put fire in your heart to increase your service to God, it's not from God. So grace is not an excuse to be idle. Paul said, let us not receive the grace of God in vain. He said, I labored, but not me. The grace that was with me. So grace is for work. Come on, grace is for what? And as you increase in service, more grace is released. Receive grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, number three question. What are the attitudes we must have as we serve God? What are the attitudes we must have? Because not all service is acceptable to God. Just like not every giving gets to heaven. Cain gave an offering and God ignored him. There are offerings you give to God that insults God. Your offering either insults God or honors him. Your behavior either insults God or honors him. Either. And he will not be insulted. He said, be far from me. I will honor them that what? For those that despise me will be lightly esteemed. So that you're serving God doesn't mean you're to market, you're already, okay. You have to check what is the attitude. How am I doing this? Am I doing this with my heart? Or has something else taken over my heart? What are the attitudes? Number one, humility. Can we say humility? I can't hear you. Say humility. 
Acts chapter 20, verse 19. I think that's where that scripture comes. Acts chapter 20, verse 19. Can we say humility? You look at this great servant of God that God has put over this commission, and all you see is what? Can you imagine going to Ghana and looking for somebody to buy him bread, give him bread? I don't know how many of you felt like, let the ground open for you to... Who fed somehow? Kai. Even at that level. And if you know him, you are close to him, he's a simple man. There are people who will carry one third of what this man is carrying. Even God can't talk to them. God has to take, take appointments. God, this is not your day. It's next week. But at that level, you see, because you see God in all his glory and his majesty as God says, concerning the work of my hands, do what? Commanding me. If God, if, if God can be commanded, who are you? So that you are doing something for the church, you know, enter your head. Your head is too small. It will break. As you are being lifted up, bring yourself what? Don't feel too important. Don't feel that if I'm not here, nothing will happen. You don't know that there is somebody waiting for you to step out. Because for every David, for every soul, there's what? Crying for Saul to mess up. Look at the number and say, you are replaceable. You are not talking. Go look at the person and say, you are replaceable. Now, if you are a husband and you say, if I die, this, my woman, this woman will, will die. It's not true. It's not true. My father died in 1991. My mother is still very fresh. Very, very fresh. In fact, she's happier. I asked her, would you marry again? She said, no. One, one is enough. One man is enough. You, you and your problems. One is enough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I thought if my father died, my mother would die. No. She's very strong. Tell somebody you are replaceable. I can't hear you tell the person face to face that you are replaceable. You are replaceable. God is in two spare parts. Everything he creates, he creates what? When he created Adam, there was a Jesus waiting for him. So when Adam ate the apple, the devil said, no, 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 you, you, it, that's the fake one. The real one is coming. Come on, tell somebody, humble yourself. No matter what you have accomplished for the kingdom, do what? Tell somebody, come down, come down, come down. Even when they are bringing you up, do what? Bring your, they try to crown Jesus by force. He snatched himself out of their hands and said, you want to stop my throne. Some of us are trying to take crowns that is too early for. It's too early. Stay small. Big things are yet to come. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord in the house now. I said, praise the Lord in the house, somebody. Ah! <laughs> it's humbling to know you have a replacement. So it makes you work harder. But you will not be replaced in Jesus' name. I said, you will not be replaced in Jesus' name. Because you'll be humble. It's not amen, I'll do it. Amen, amen, amen. And they're replacing you. Humble yourself. He said to Saul, when you were small in your eyes, I made you king over Israel. When you knew you were nothing, I made you something. Remember whatever you have, you received. Praise the Lord. Come on, tell somebody to humble yourself. When you have accomplished a great thing like this great program, come to the Lord and say, I did only what you gave me what? The grace to do. Not, pastor, you've not called me on the phone to appreciate me. Did you see what, I, what we did? Who are you? You are just a vessel. Don't anybody say you're a vessel. But I see God blessing you as a vessel. You're a blessed vessel. You're a blessed vessel. You're a blessed vessel. The second attitude you must have is serving God. God is a very, you know, God is a God of standard. If you don't meet up his standard, he will not collect it. I'd rather not do it than do it wrongly. Number two, you must have a willing heart. You must have what? Not compelled, not threatened, not am twisted, not coerced. No, it must come from your... Paul said, if I do this thing willingly, if I do this service willingly, I have what? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. If I do this thing, what? If I do, tell someone, do it willingly. You are doing it willingly when you do it without being reminded. You know I should do this. 
and you know it's time to go to church, you're there. You know it's time to be in that uh, meeting, you're there. Because your heart is there. Not they're calling you, are you coming? Uh, let me see now. See what? Are you coming? I don't know, I'm not in the mood. What mood are you talking about? Do you want God to tell you, I'm not in the mood for you to wake up this morning? I'm not in the mood. Thank God, God is not this mood swingy kind of God. We will be finished. Just one day he has a mood swing, wakes up in the morning, all of you should not wake up. Let's have some peace on this earth. But when you are sleeping, your heart is beating. How many of us have ever made your heart beat once? He's servicing you while you are sleeping. And now they have to force you to serve him. Your heart, you are breathing. <gasps> Some of you will make noise in the house. <gasps> but you are breathing, you are alive. They'll be worried when you're not making that noise. God, that means you're dead. And you wake up in the morning and say, serve God. He says, no, no. God has not given me the husband he promised me. He didn't promise any husband. He promised you salvation. Read the Bible. There's no place in the Bible that says you have a husband. It's you that is conjuring that one. He said, whatever shall I ask? You're the one asking that. What he said, he that believes shall what? That's the authentic thing, the promise. Every other thing is Jara. Come on, are we here? All the husbands in the world will not deliver you from hell. But Jesus has secured the place for you in heaven. Come on, lift your hands and say, Father, I give my life to you. Even if you don't bless me again. Open your mouth and say, even if you don't bless me again, I will serve you. Amen. Don't you tell God, what have you done lately? You have not been busy, Lord. I do, God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. It says, if you are willing and what? If you are willing and what? You shall eat the good. So you will not eat the good until you are willing. You know you can be obedient without being what? Yes, you can be obedient. You can do it because they told you. But God said, if you add willingness to that obedience, I will bless you. You show up in that meeting because you want to be there. I will bless you. You preach that message because you want to do it. I will bless you. Let it come from your heart. Amen. I said amen. I said, can we say from my heart? Can we say from my heart? Colossians 3 verse 24, very fast. I don't have much time. Colossians 3 verse 24. Colossians 3 verse 23 and 24. Colossians 3 verse... Oh God. Knowing that, where, where is that? Whatever you do in verse 23, do it what? As to who? Who is the person you're serving? I'm asking somebody, who are you serving? Are you serving this church? Yes, you're serving, but really, who are you really serving? Who is receiving your service? If God were to be the one to receive your service, is this how you will serve God? If you knew that God is on the receiving end of everything you're doing in your kingdom, how would you do it? If you knew God was the one receiving your offering, this one you're going to bring now, how, what kind of offering will you give? He said, whatever you do, do it heartily from your heart. God is not a slave driver. It's not, it's not a wicked God. He wants you to do it from the heart. He said, do it heartily as unto who? Uh, why? And not, and not to what? And not to what? Stop seeing man. See Jesus. See what Jesus went on, the, on all the way to the cross to do for you and for me. I told God, I said, even if you don't do anything for me, I will serve you. I will die. I have decided I will die. If you had died, maybe I was preaching somewhere. I have decided I will die. Put a knife on my neck, I will still preach. It's not because of anything. Because I understand what this means. It's a privilege. Come on, help me, help me tell somebody it's a privilege. Look at the number and say, it's a privilege to serve the God of heaven. Come on, it's a privilege to what? We are very excited to work for president and all the governors, but we, when it comes to God, you lose your, your zeal because you have no revelation of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number four, with a pure conscience. With what? With a pure conscience. We, we are to serve God with a pure conscience, not with evil motives and hidden agendas. Not to win 
praises of men, but to please God who sees our heart. We must avoid anything that's capable of hurting our conscience in the sight of God. So make sure your heart is always right when you serve God. When you have issues with the Holy Ghost, issues where you need to repent of, deal with it. Don't say, I'm serving God, so that covers. No, it doesn't cover. If there are issues you need to talk about or deal with, deal with that so that you have to be clear. All right? Number five, with diligence. No, number five, with insincerity and truth. Can we say sincerity? Job, Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Joshua 24, verse 14. Joshua 24, verse 14. Are we there? Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in what? Serve him in what? In sincerity and in what? Truth. And put away the gods of your fathers. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Fast, fast, fast. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians. For those who are efficient. He said, not with what? I service. As what? As men please us, but as bond servants of Christ. I can't see this in here. Eh? Doing what? The will of God from where? From the heart. It has to be from the heart. Amen? Not as men please us. Pastors around you are now run around. When he goes, you go back. No, it's not man that I'm serving. Pastors around, in a rush. No. Jesus is there already. Look at Jesus as your, as your master. Amen? I said amen. Number six, with diligence. With what? Serve God with diligence. God hates I, uh, lousiness, laziness. What is laziness? Doing less than you can. That's laziness. Doing what? Less than you can. That's laziness. He said about the woman who poured perfume on, on his feet. They're trying to stop her. He said, leave her. For she has done all she could. So can God say you have done all you can? Ask your neighbor, is this all you can do? I can't hear you. Tell the person for me. Is this all? Is there more? Is this all? I'm in the usher. I'm usher. I'm okay. No. Is that all? Being a deacon was not enough for Philip. He said, inside me, there's a fire for evangelism. And then he went out and began to win souls and moved from deacon to evangelist, deacon, deacon evangelist. Praise the Lord. There is something in you God is looking for. And so the question is, have you given all? Are you just giving what they told you? When there, are, there is more on the inside of you. Is this all? Is this your best? Can we do better than this? I'm asking everybody here. Can we do better than this? Ask your neighbor, can you do better than this? Tell, come on, tell the person, can you do better than this? Can you give more than this? I like to share this story about my father. One day he asked the, the maid, not the maid, we don't call the maid, the lady in the house. Okay, no, it's not the lady in the house. What do you call people who are helping you in the house? They help. House help. Make me tea and put milk. We were in the parlor. And the guy brought the milk, the tea, and he turned it. There was not enough milk. He said, uh-uh. What happened to the milk? There's no milk in this tea. The lady said to her, to him, it's in the fridge. It's in the fridge? She said, yes. He said, who are you keeping the milk for? The milk is my own. The fridge is my own. The house is my own. You. I learned a very valuable lesson that day. Ask your neighbor, what are you, who are you keeping the milk for? Come on, say it. Who are you keeping the, the reserve for? Jesus did not reserve anything in saving you. He gave all. How come you're giving him half? Who are you keeping the rest for? Is there another Lord you have somewhere you will now serve better than you're serving God here? Is there some other place you're going to go and be better than you are here now? Who have you reserved your strength for? He said, for thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your strength. Can we say all my strength? Can we say all my strength? Say all my soul. All my might. Say everything that is in me. That means serve God until you are exhausted. Pour your life into him. Do everything within your power to finish what is committed to your hand. Amen. Let's give all. Can we say all? So, say, Jesus, you gave me all. 
I will give you all. You gave me all, I cannot give you some. I must give you all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number nine, with complete focus on him. With complete what? Focus, Matthew chapter 6, 24. You cannot serve God and mom. You have to choose whom you are serving. God must be the motivation of everything you are doing in life. Not money. And number eight, is it nine? With faithfulness. With what? First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. It is required. So the job requirement for serving God, one of them is what? First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Moreover, it is what? Required in stewards or servants. That a man be found what? That a man be found what? So what is faithfulness? Faithfulness means trustworthiness. Can the church rely on you in that area? This thing we are observing today is the result of faithful men. Can we say faithful men? Faithful men and women who gave all for us to be here today. Let us clap hands for them. Let's clap hands for the people who gave, who gave and gave and gave and gave. Come on, let's appreciate God for them. If they were like some of us, this place would not exist. I asked somebody in the church, if everybody was serving God the way you are serving God, would the church exist? Because one Sunday you're in church, next time we see you, it's three months time. If all of us were like that, there would be no church. Your inconsistency is killing the work of God. Be faithful. Be dependable. Let us know that on that area we can rely on you. She will be here by that time. She will do that job. He's going to do that job. We know he's going to be there. Can God sleep knowing that you're around? Can God rest knowing that you have taken that position? Can the pastor do something else because he knows you are there? Come on, say, Lord, I'm here. I can't hear you. Say, Lord, I'm here. Say, Lord, you can count on me. Say, Lord, from this moment, you can count on me. I will not fail you. One man was made youth leader. And then he called the people and had a very thorough, thorough speech. After that speech, nobody saw him again. Till today. Are you the kind of person that disappears when there's a problem? And appears when the battle is over? So of us, when they were doing this thing, you disappeared. And now we're here, you've come again wearing suits. Can God trust you? Can the church trust you? Can the pastor trust you? God's looking for men like that. People you know, no matter what, they are there. You will not fail. I can't hear you. I say you will not fail. Say, so I will not fail you, Lord. You better say it louder. Lord, I will not fail you. I will not fail you. I will not fail you. And then, the last question. What are the benefits of service? I don't know how much time I have. I should close. I have 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes. So every one minute, we'll talk about one. Once, once it costs one minute, just tell me, move on. If you have... Uh, if you have the spirit. Amen. Amen. What are the benefits of serving God? Many things you are praying for are not prayer issues. Oh God, prosper me. Prosper me. So that the people in my village will know that I'm serving you. God's not interested in that. God's not, it's God's not involved in your ego, ego business. Lord, give me a big car. So when I arrive, they know I have arrived. Today's big car is tomorrow's taxi. I remember when the, the phone came in, Triune, not Triune. Is it Triune or Triumph? Triune. My uncle bought his own. We couldn't go near the phone. You couldn't even look at it. He said, why are you looking at that phone? Reduce how you're looking at that phone. So you're not moving your eyes. We couldn't look at the phone. He felt like the greatest man in the empire. His, that phone was there. I, was, I said, Kai, Kai, where's that phone now? God, keep me alive. Keep me alive. Why? All the days you have lived, you have caused nothing but problem. Lord, give me long life. Long life to endure you more. 
There are things you are praying for that are not prayer issues. The only thing we are told to pray for is to the Holy Ghost to send people to bring the harvest in. These other things are things that answer to you when you begin to do what you should do. Seek it first what? And all these things, can we say these things? Can we say these things? Can we say these things are mine? Say these things are mine. Come on, don't be, don't be afraid. Say these things are mine. When you pass a big house, say what? When you see them pack with a intimidating car, tell them what? I will let you drive this car for now. When the time comes, you must surrender my car. Say I'm a servant of God. Say I'm a servant of God. Say I'm a servant of God. You go to the president to complain about your problem, your house rent, your house rent, your school fees, your, and the president is telling you who will help me win the election. You're telling him, my house rent, my school fees, we have not eaten since last week. Who will help me go to the north? I'm giving an example. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Don't you think if you answer that call of who will go, that your school fees, your rent, come and say, do this thing and every other thing. Say, do this thing and every other thing shall be yours. So what are the benefits? Number one, prosperity and pleasure. Why did they add pleasure? Because there is prosperity and pressure. Why did he say good success? Because there is bad success. You are rich, but you can't eat anything. You only eat vegetable, raw vegetable. And watching people eating your money, that's not prosperity. It says prosperity and pleasure. Let's see Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they, can we say if? So there's a condition for prosperity. The condition, they say, if they pray and pray and pray and pray, I'll prosper them. No. If they what? Obey and what? They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in. Let me say one thing to you. The covenant does not respect the government in power. It's not a function of who is on the seats. Daniel kept appearing from regime to regime because he had a connection with God. Come on, tell somebody, I cannot be unseated. When God gives you a seat, who can unseat you? Let God be your blesser. He said, they shall spend their days in what? And their years in what? Number two, access to deep insights. He said in verse 12, go to verse 12 very fast. He says, but if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without, can we say knowledge? So there is a knowledge that keeps you alive, only available to those who serve. There's a revelation that guarantees exemption. It says, for unto others, this is parable, but to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of disappearing inside accidents. You are big bad and you are in your house. The mystery of the open fire, you pa, 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 and everything behind is burnt down, but you are still standing. Can we say, I am a mystery? You're not talking, say, I am a mystery. Tell your neighbor, I am a mystery. He said, There's a mystery which they will not get. That's why they will die. You will not die. I say, You will not die. I say you will not die. Number three, divine immunity against evil. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. These are the covenant blessings of those that serve God. No weapon formed against you shall do what? You are not, you, I don't know, I don't know. Are you afraid? Did they tell you not to say anything? No weapon formed against you shall do what? And every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall... This is the heritage of who? Say, I am untouchable. One more time. Louder, come on, louder, louder. No weapon formed with you in mind will succeed. He didn't say, no weapon. All the weapons which they are forming can work, but if it is because of you, it will fail. Hallelujah. Say, I'm covered. One more time. 
but you are not covered if you are not serving. You are taking a risk with your destiny. Coming to church, collect, and then go. That error has ended in Jesus' name. Number six, divine covering. Divine what? Angelic covering, sorry. Angelic covering. We've seen that. Number, number, is that number four? Number four is angelic covering. Write that one down. Read that when you get to your house. Angels are available to you. We've heard about angels today. Let's not take time there. Number five, honor. Help me say honor. Who wants to see honor in 2015? Some of us have already seen honor here. Who wants to see more honor in 2015? The year has started. Anybody tell you happy new year now? You just woke up. Just woke up. Tell him, tell him he needs help. This is April now. Amen. Who, who wants to see honor throughout this year? Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 26. So honor is not a gift of the Spirit. It's not a gift. Come on, take honor. Come on, take honor. Take it. You fall down. No. It's not falling down thing. Get up and serve. Get up and what? When you're falling down, start cleaning someone's shoe while you're on the ground there. Start sweeping the place where you, have, where you fell. Are we talking now? So you can receive real honor. He said, if anyone serves me, let him what? Follow my example. And where I am, there will my servant also. If anyone serves me, him will my father. Him will my father. Not man will honor you. Not the church will honor, not the church call you to give you an award. Thank God for human award. That's good. Sometimes they may award the wrong person. But God doesn't award the wrong person. So my reward is with me to give unto every man as his work shall be. So when they ignore you, God is noticing you. When they don't recognize you, somebody is writing a book concerning you. Come on, say, honor is coming my way. You are not talking, say, honor is coming my way. Say, I shall be honored in 2015. One more time, I shall be honored in 2015. So the key to honor is not praying for honor. It's not night vision. It's not even reading books on honor. It's having God. Some of us just read books and we might even have it. I read a book on prosperity. From that day, something entered me. Nothing entered you. What will enter you is the spirit of service. From the day I read that thing, something entered me. What entered you? You can't fake pregnancy. You can be deceiving us that you're pregnant and carrying pillow inside your stomach. After nine months, we're going to make a demand on you. Listen to me. Some of you are going to cast some things this weekend. I can't hear you. I said you're going to cast something this weekend. So Holy Ghost, impregnate me with realities. I will return next year with the proof of this encounter. Let's stop faking blessing. Let's stop getting blessed. Stop snapping pictures and ask people's car. Don't oppress your destiny. Don't call somebody's suit and come to a wedding. No, where you hold. Let God know where you are. Because when the angel wants to bless you and they see you already blessed, they will take the blessing home. Say honor. Say, Father God, help me to serve you in this church. I will not lose my honor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number six. Is it six? We have to move fast. There's no time. A place in heaven. Help me say a place in heaven. So you are not planning to go to heaven if you're not serving God on the earth. Period. All these people sitting and watching God in the church. Hmm? There are two batches of those that will go to heaven. There's the first batch. And there's the supplementary batch. Supplementary batch are the ones who are going to see the Antichrist. Auntie and Uncle Pride. Two of them. They will deal with you. Tell somebody if you don't serve God now. You will see serve later. So I want to be in the first batch. Who wants to be in the first batch? I don't need to sing. When you come to collect your people, remember why? why? Did you forget me? Can you imagine your child singing that song for you inside in school when you're coming to collect children from school? Your child is saying, "Daddy, when you come to collect your children, remember." Would your father think you're crazy? How can I be seated in heavenly places in Christ and when I die, I'm on a long line? It's people who are not serving God that will go on the long line. Ooh. Tell somebody, I have a, I have a place there. Ooh. Say, I have a space there! And as your service increases, your land increases in heaven. So I'm already buying land in heaven now. 
Oh my God, are they, are they not hearing me here? Come on, ask your neighbor, what do you have up there? Ask your neighbor for me, what do you have up there? Because the state you rapture in is your permanent state. There is no room for improvement in heaven. If you go as Lazarus, Lazarus you shall be for eternity. God forbid. And there is no more room in Abraham's bosom. Lazarus has taken it. So I don't know who you're going to spot with. Praise the Lord. Where I am, there will my servants. Where is Jesus? Not just in heaven. Where is Jesus? On the right hand of God. Tell somebody I'm planning to get there. Tell somebody I'm working hard here. Because I'm appearing there. You're not saying it now. Say, I am working hard here. Look at this man. What do you think will happen in heaven when he appears? Seller. What do you think will happen? When they say, let us now welcome brother, because his brother there. Because Christ is the senior brother. Let's welcome brother David. Woo. A man who has given and given. He has been serving God for over 30 something years now. Not one day has he sat down to be served. Follow him. Don't, don't covet the suit and the tie. You are being foolish. Now, is, did you see the car he came with? Hey, see car, see car. That's all you're going to see, car. That's all that, your relationship with that car is that you're going to see it. It will never see you. That's how they live these things. Serve God! And these things! They will follow you in 2015. You woke up in the morning, a miracle has taken place already. Some of you, before you get back to your location, something is waiting for you there. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Tell them, I'm, I'm planning to go to heaven. What about you? So I'm walking here for my walk, for my place there. Say, I have a reward. He's coming to reward me. Rapture is gathering of servants for their reward. At the end of the day, the the master said, call all those servants who are working for me so that I can pay them. So last rapture is what? Payday. Will you go to UBA on payday if you're not working there? You will not meet the Antichrist in Jesus' name. You will not miss this first flight in Jesus' name. You will not miss this first flight in Jesus' name. You will not miss this first flight in Jesus' name. A place in heaven. One more scripture, if I don't do anything further. Chapter 22 of Revelation. Let's see verse 3. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I was in a vision one night, and they took me to a place. They said, come, let us show you the house we are building for you. And I followed them in that vision. And I saw them building a bungalow. About three bedroom. I said, God, is this what I'm working for? He says, the work you're doing. The material you supply us from your work is what I used to, to build this thing. So if you stop working, you will meet uncompleted building when you go there. Say, God forbid. You will not squat here and squat in heaven. Say, Father God, I will walk with all you have given me. So that when you appear, I will have nothing to be ashamed of. Praise the Lord. You are going to meet Jesus. You will meet him. In what state will you meet him? What question will you ask him? Will he ask you? He says, and there shall be no more cost but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and his servant shall what? So in heaven, service does what? In heaven, service does what? In heaven, service does what? So the servants will continue, go to heaven and continue serving. You will not miss that rapture. You will not miss your place. You will do it with the right attitude in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Holy Spirit, as I leave this mountain, possess my heart with a renewed passion for the kingdom. Holy Spirit, as I leave this place, before the end of this encounter, give me a fresh fire 
that nothing can, can, can erase, that nothing can quench. Give me a fresh fire. You are going to appear to Jesus. You are saying, Jesus, come, Jesus, come. Come and see what? Come and see your idleness. Come and see the time you're spending watching movie for Monday to night. Not one soul has been spoken to. Not one life has been affected. You just continue to exist. Hearing messages, collecting books, but nobody has been blessed by you. He said, for the time when you ought to be teachers, you still need to be taught. So there's a time to be a student, and there's a time to be a teacher. There's a time God wants you to begin to affect people with what you have been affected with. He said, that which you heard me say among many, commit to faithful men who will teach others. What will happen after this meeting? Will somebody's life be affected by you? Will the church be affected by your presence? Will something new happen because you came here? Talk to God about that. Help me, Holy Spirit. Give me a fresh fire, a fresh passion. But talk to God. Help me, Holy Spirit, that before I leave this meeting, a fresh fire to serve you will burn my heart. Talk to God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Give me a fresh fire, a fresh fire of service. A fresh, not to sit down and wait for miracles. There are people waiting for miracles. There are those others making miracles happen. There are people waiting for things to happen. There are those making it happen. There are people who don't ask God anything, yet God, God gives them everything. They don't ask God anything, but God gives them everything because of your commitment to God. Commit yourself to something. Be a committed Christian. Be committed to your department. Be committed to your church. Be committed to your pastor. Be committed for once. Take something and, and do it well. Do something well after this meeting. Finish that assignment. Complete it. Talk to God about that. Lord, I will give you more. Than, I know I can give more than this. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. In this area of service, that through this encounter, I will have a new fire. Talk to God about that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. We glorify your name. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900